So is this the year that you want to get ahead in your career and you're gung-ho about setting goals, but you don't know what goals to set? Stay tuned for this video in which I share some of the most common areas that my clients work on to get ahead in their careers. Hi, my name is Dr. Patricia Thompson. I'm a corporate psychologist and executive coach. And in my career, I've worked with a lot of leaders and individuals at different stages of their careers. I've worked with college students who are on the brink of graduation, trying to figure out what they're gonna do next, all the way up to people in the C-suite who are looking for ways to continue to fine tune and be more effective. And one thing I will say is that the people I've found who tend to be the most successful are the ones who have a mindset for continuous improvement. They want to continue to get ahead. They're not good enough or happy enough with just being okay or even good. They want to make sure that they're great and always bettering their skills and up leveling to the next level. And so if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're one of those people too. And what I will say is also having worked with a lot of different people, we all have different areas in which to grow. We have strengths, which are so important to identify so that you can make sure that you leverage them and use them in a way that's really intentional. And we also have developmental opportunities, things that we need to work on so that we can get better and be ready for the next level. Uh, so the first thing I would say that you should do if you're wanting to work on improving yourself this year is to start to think about your strengths. And the way that you can do that is number one, just kind of reflect on them generate a list of what you think your strengths are. Think about the times that you're at your very best at work and what it is about you that you're bringing to the table that's enabling you to function at such a high level. Um, another way you can get in touch with your strengths would be to take a personality test. There are various ones online. I also, you know, I'm someone who gives a lot of them in my work, like you know, Myers-Briggs, DISC, Hogan, things along those lines. Um, and so if that's something you're interested in, having someone professional uh, interpret them for you, then definitely reach out to me. And then the last thing I would suggest you do to get in touch with your strengths is to ask people for feedback. Ask them, what do I bring that's unique to my work? Or when do you see me being at my best? What do you appreciate that I do at work? What would you love me to continue doing to be effective? And once you get that list together, think about ways that you can be, again, more intentional about bringing those to your work. How can you position yourself in ways where others will be able to really see those strengths? Because, you know, we're gonna talk about developmental opportunities in a moment, but really what you wanna be thinking about is how do I bring my best self to the table and how can I do even more of that? Okay, so now that we've covered with the strengths, the next thing I wanna do is talk about some common developmental opportunities that I work with clients on. Um, and the first one I wanna talk about is improving your soft skills. Now, soft skills are something that I don't necessarily like the name of because I think they should just be called necessary skills. Typically, when you see people derailing, a lot of times it's because they don't know how to get along with people or they don't know how to manage their emotions, or they're you know, argumentative, or it's just some sort of interpersonal problem. Um, and so one goal that you might wanna work on is to develop your soft skills. Um, there are a number of ways that you can do that. I could probably do a whole video about just that. Um, my purpose for this video is just to give you ideas about things to work on. Um, but what I would say is if you wanna get started working on your soft skills, I have a course called, um, the 21 day crash course in emotional intelligence. You can look that up in the courses below and that'll give you some strategies to work on your soft skills. But again, if someone's told you you need to work on your soft skills, don't use the term soft skills and make you feel like they're not important. They're really important. Um, and emotional intelligence is something that's very predictive of success at work. So take them seriously. 
Another area that you might want to focus on is your time management skills. And this is something that I've seen really mess up a lot of people in a number of ways. Number one, if you're not organized and you're not managing your time effectively, then you could be wasting a lot of time or you could be missing deadlines or you could be you know, acting as a bottleneck for people so that you're holding things up. Um, you could be coming across as unresponsive if you're not responding to emails or if you're taking too long to respond to them. And so time management issues can really create problems for the people you work with um, and make you look maybe a little bit flaky or unreliable. Um, and so to get started on working with your time management skills, you know, some things that I would suggest doing would be number one, just getting yourself more organized. So at the beginning of the day, figuring out what you need to get done that day, and then also figuring out when you might do it. Um, using task lists can be really helpful to help you to be more efficient. Um, sometimes people who have issues with time management um, have issues in that they're working on the wrong things. So prioritizing is essential. Um, if you're a leader, sometimes time management can come from not delegating appropriately. Um, there are a lot of things that can underlie time management issues. Um, and so the first thing you probably want to do is start to pay attention just to how you're using your time and then reflect on, is this the best use of my time and what might be getting in the way of me being more productive? Um, and maybe I'll do a future video on how to get better at managing your time. Cause as I'm saying this, there are a lot of different things that can affect it. Um, and the last thing that I would say, I mean, there are any number of things you could work on, but would be to work on leadership skills. That's something that a lot of my clients work on. Um, and you know, to be a more effective leader, it really requires you to have a good understanding of yourself, both in terms of your strengths, like I talked about before, so that you can leverage those, but also in terms of areas of opportunity. So one thing you might think about is, what do I do that frustrates my direct reports? For example, do I not delegate enough? Or do I delegate so much and then micromanage? Or don't I communicate enough with them or show enough of an interest in them? Or do I need to step up more as a leader and kind of own my position so that I can have the conversations that I need to have with people um, to help them to perform or to deal with people maybe who aren't performing well. So think about who you are as a leader, where your developmental opportunities are, and then think about who do I want to be as a leader and where is the gap between who I am now and who I would like to become. And as you think about that gap, that can give you some additional ideas about what you might need to start doing to become a more effective leader. Um, and a lot of leaders that I work with work with an executive coach, i.e. me. And so if that's something that you're interested in, then uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, on my website and we can talk about ways that we can work together. Another common goal that I see for people, especially lately, is stress management. Um, you know, with what's been going on with the pandemic and the way that work has shifted and how our boundaries can come blurrier between work and home, particularly if you're working from home or even if you're working in an office, you know, doing more with less since we have a lot of uh, staff shortages, um, stress is something that's an issue. And so for your development, it's really important to know how to manage your stress. Because the truth is that most of us, when we have high levels of stress and we're not managing it well, that's when we're at our worst. That's when we become irritable or that's when we feel burnt out and like we're not motivated and not working as effectively. Now again, there are a number of things that you could do to manage your stress as there are for any of the topics that I've been covering. Um, but if this is one of the goals that you're looking for, then what I would encourage you to do as a start would to just be intentional about self-care activities, thinking about what are different things that you could be doing to carve out moments of time to take care of yourself. Um, also, if time management's an issue, that can sometimes cause stress, and so you might need to see if there are ways that you can be more productive or allocate your time differently so that you're not getting yourself um, in stressful situations. And then lastly, um, sometimes stress management comes from what we're telling ourselves in the moment, the stories that we're telling ourselves. Um, and again, 
there's a lot I could be saying about stress management. Um, but for all of these topics, actually, if you go to my courses section, um, that link, you'll see a variety of courses that can help you with all of these different topics. So those are just some ideas about things that you could be working on for your development. Um, but what I would say is, so it's one thing to have the idea about what you want to work on, and then what do you do to be able to ensure or increase the odds that you'll accomplish your goal? Well, the first thing is getting crystal clear on your goal, and then a best practice is to create a development plan. So come up with a list of ways that you're specifically going to work on your goal. Make them, you know, smart goals, so specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time limited. Um, and so for each action step, you might put a due date. So for example, I'll read this book on leadership by X time, or I'll take this one of Patricia's courses by X time, something like that. Or I will um, ask my uh, team for feedback by whatever time. Um, so those kind of things so that you have a plan of attack. And then it can really help to build in some accountability. So if you're working with a coach, then that person kind of builds in the accountability for you, but you could do it with a friend, let him or her know that you're working on, you know, this particular goal and can we check in, you know, every other week or monthly or whatever time frame, so that they can ask you how you're pursuing it. Um, sometimes putting your goals on social media has actually been found through research to really help. So for example, if people are trying to lose weight or something like that, they found that if they're posting about their journey, that provides some built-in accountability. And so the same thing would occur with any goal, you know, that you're wanting to work on. Just be honest on social media. Um, and let me think if there's anything else that I would say in terms of getting you started. Um, I guess the only other thing might be to make some notes on your calendar so that if you get started, you're all gung-ho and then it falls by the wayside, you might have a reminder that comes up a month from now saying, hey, get back on track. And then that'll help you to, you know, kind of see what's been getting in the way of you moving forward and then hopefully get back on track so that you can work on your development. Okay, so that's it for this video. Didn't want to make it super, super long. Like I said, my main intent was to give you some ideas about things to work on. Um, but you know, to work on any of these areas, you could take a whole course. So um, yeah. So anyway, um, that's it for this video. Again, my name is Dr. Patricia Thompson. Please make sure to like and subscribe and comment if you enjoyed this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.